What's going on people of Pro Guides who's ready for another video? Today's video marks the start of our new video series where we give you guys a tour of each map in the current active duty pool. We're going to be giving you guys a comprehensive guide on how to play each map and to kick us off we're going to be taking you off to sunny Morocco as I give you guys the next tips and tricks on how to play the one and only Mirage. Hate to be this guy but as always there's always one thing that we got to do right before the video starts. Can you guess what it is? Well, it's the question of the day. Today we're going to be keeping the theme of Mirage going, so let us know in the comments below what your favorite position is to play on this map. Do you like dash into window as soon as you can just scope in on top of mid? Are you the rock solid anchor at B site, blocking the apartments like Gandalf on the bridge? Or are you that guy who just likes to get aggressive on A, finding your way into ramp and palace every other round and destroying the terrace setup? For me personally, I'm the B player. I rarely see any action from a B. The thing when playing B is that you probably don't really see a lot of action kind of like my love life. Anyway, don't forget to scroll down and let us know in the comment section and stick around to watch the video and I'm sure that you guys will be able to pick up a few tricks to play with your position. Now that we've got the pleasantries all out of the way, we gotta stick to the video like a T-bone steak with a beautiful side of peppercorn sauce. Sorry, I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> Anyway, for the beginning part of this video, I'm going to be talking about you guys who like to play on the CT side. First up, we'll have a chat about some general ideas geared towards playing CT side as a whole, then we'll be moving towards specific sides of the individuals. First up, let's go ahead and talk about the classic setups. There is, of course, a well-known 2-1-2 setup, which certainly has its merits as two people in each side should be pretty much a guarantee hold. However, as you move up the higher level of play, you'll find that only one person can't hold mid alone, and furthermore, losing mid control will normally lose you the round. Therefore, changing towards a more mid-heavy setup, such as a 1-3-1, is way more preferred. A solid anchor on each side can easily do their job, and if the two additional mid players play correctly, they won't ever be too long of a rotate away from their respective bomb site. Additionally, once you take mid control, you can actually rotate and play the 2-1-2 again, confident in the fact that connector and short are off limits. Now that we've got the overall setup completed, let's go ahead and focus on how you should defend. A barrage, to put it bluntly, you have to be very proactive. Sitting back and giving away the map control each round will quickly result in a 15-0 halftime score. What I mean here is that you gotta take that fight to the terrace and then claim up some map control. Whether this is fighting tooth and nail for mid, sneaking into palace or catapulting a killer combo, maids and to be apartments and then taking control of it, you need to make sure that the terrorists are uncomfortable with their play. Utility is hugely important on Mirage as well, as all areas of the map feature very arrow choke points and can be easily cut off with a hazy cloud of smoke or a blazing inferno. Try and reserve either one of your molly or smoke for late in the round and throw it around 30 seconds left if there hasn't been any action. Well placed counter nade on Mirage can really throw a spanner in the works. Now that we've got a general idea of how to play the map, it's time to focus more on how you, the individual, can play different sits. First up, playing A. On A, it's important to mix up how close the choke points you play. Some rounds you want to be diving into palace and rolling down ramp, whereas other areas you want to be more reserved, perhaps in CT or by triple box. Something that's really helpful in stopping a push on A is a well-timed flashbang. Due to how A site is, there is a huge number of opportunities to throw a flash that will hit anyone running up to the site. Simply lobbing one high above and a bit behind you normally does the trick as you can peek with it and not get blinded. However, don't stop there. Research some pretty good spots that can be replicated such as great pop flashes from areas like shadow, scaffolding, sandwiches, and anything that you can think of. Sandwich. <laughs> Still hungry. Next up for playing A, a little tip to play against a full execute. Seeing the barrage of smokes and flashes glide over the wall can be very demoralizing. A good execute will lock you and any teammate out the site, leaving anybody playing deep alone to duke it out with 5 angry terrorists. If that's you stuck in the front of the smokes, your number one goal is to delay. Delay the push as much as you can, throwing all the other counter names that you can muster, and then jiggle peeking into oblivion. When backup arrives, they can support you with their own utility to help level the playing field. If you're stuck behind the said smokes, there are two things that can work great, both involving the jungle smoke. First up, there's likely to be a gap in the jungle smoke a lot of the time. If you can find it, you can exploit it. Second up, pushing through the back of the jungle smoke onto the bench is a tried and tested method to help you guys get some frags along your way. As you can see, the terrorists normally faster before they can see you. Last up, we're going to be talking about connector. Playing connector can be done in two ways. You can either get right up in the face of the terrorists in the middle, or you can go ahead and be more reserved around the top of connector. Whichever one you do, once again, utility is your best friend. 
Flashing yourself in or out of connector is as easy as pie, and a well-placed smoke towards the bottom of the stairs gives you a very effective one-way smoke. The main thing that you should be looking out for is underpass. Place too much attention on top mid, and one of these rounds you'll get caught off guard by someone seeking out of underpass. Onto my preferred site, it's time to talk about the beautiful D-bomb site for a little bit. If you play it wrong, you'll be subjected to endless rushes as the T-sides take advantage of your poor defense time and time again. However, pay attention to the next few minutes as you'll end up forming a defense around the site that is so, so good. Without a doubt, the best way to play B is to be aggressive. Apartments control is almost as good as mid control on Mirage, as you can leave one person deep in apps and play everyone else mid and on A, using a push up player as an early warning system for any B pushes. The best way to do this is to improvise a molly deep into apps at the start of the round. Jump onto the balcony fast and aid the push with some flashes from a teammate. Whether you go full distance into apps or sit on the sofa, only go hallway and then hide behind the wall or decide basically bunk down on balcony. If the T's push you like this, it's sure to be the round for the CT's. Of course, some rounds you won't really be able to make it up. On these ones, without a doubt, the best place to play is at bench. With an easy escape route and two great headshot angles to abuse, and an easy crossfire available to set up for teammates on short, bench is a gift that keeps on giving. If instead of sight you play more towards short, there's one simple thing that you need to keep in mind. You're a short player, not a mid player. If you push it too deep, you'll more often than not be leaving your teammates to die on B site. Of course, if they manage to push into apartments, it's a different story, but if they haven't, you gotta stay close. Try not to stray much past the ladder room, and you can probably have quick rotations to anywhere on the map. Your teammate on B site will be sure to thank you for it. The final position that we're going to be talking about is the middle of the map. Playing mid genuinely from the window can be a very trying area of the map to play in. Smokes will cut you off immediately, and occasionally someone's just going to 1D you from top mid. If you're a designated window player, the best thing you can do is play for info. Chances are you'll rarely get an open duel, so the best thing you can do most of this time is to give the mid and instead hold short and the window boost. Unless you have teammates that will fight with you in the middle, this is really your only option past an aggressive underpass peak. Of course, hiding on the left side of the window and holding connector instead does have its merits. However, it's very a much in one and done spot. If you do decide to peak mid after the terrorist side takes control, make sure you call for a flash from one of your teammates. It's very easy to throw a god tier pop flash from either the site into middle, and from that you'll be able to grab a kill or two. To recap quickly to make sure you guys get the gist of it, once top mid gets smoked, hold short instead, but communicate with your teammates on A that you can come up connector. If you feel the need to pee, call for a flash. And finally, never let the terrorist side into the window. Once they get there, the round will be all but lost. Alrighty then, now that we got all that boring CT gameplay out of the way, it's time to put our best bombing outfit on and get started on blowing the crap out of those wooden crates. As with CT side, we'll be starting off with some general gameplay points and then specialize a little bit more on each area of the map. Firstly, and by far most significantly, it's all about mid control. As we touched on it when we were talking about the CT side, if the terror side have proper mid control, the scales tip dramatically in their favor. What's best is how simple getting mid control can be. A simple smoke on top mid to mask the cross, and a few flashes will give you guys the top of mid. From there, slowly and methodically work your way down middle towards the short or connector, being sure to clear everything and using your utility. Once you take out their ladder room or connector control, you can rest a bit knowing that you've more than likely got the round after taking so much space, and then hit one of the sites with a killer split attack. However, even though middle is uber important, let's not forget the extremities of the map. Making sure that you have palace and B apps control is nearly just as vital, so be sure to have a player in each of those areas as well to hold on. Taking control of all those things I just mentioned requires what is called default. A default is, as the name suggests, what you and your team should be doing by default each and every round. A good basic default you can easily follow in your solo queue games consists of the following. One person holding A to make sure that there are no pushes, one towards B to hold apartments and later in the round to go underpass to mid if needed, and the final three, the opera who should be holding out middle and taking control. You don't have to really go follow a default every single round, however, establishing a solid one will bring structure and round wins to your team. Let's rush straight into B set for our next part of the video. Pushing B on Mirage boils down to one thing, flashes. Flashes galore. Chuck flashes over the wall, out of the window, and off of van. Bombard the CTs because otherwise, you'll have a really tough time getting onto the site. The amount of angles that you have to clear to get onto B is ridiculous, but once you cut half of them off with some well-placed flashes, you're in business. Make sure to check balcony and van, and after that get onto bomb site and get that bomb down. Planning for short is generally the most favorable bomb plant spot, however, a default plan for apartments also works wonders. Once you've got the bomb down, you'll need to hold off the retake. Holding off a retake on B is one of the easiest things to do on the site. 
The best bit of advice I have for a post plant on B is to play bench. Once you're at bench, you can easily control what engagements you take and win. And if you play off your teammates correctly, you'll be sure to win the round. Pop out on the left and right to one tap people on short, or take a step backwards and hold the window. Maybe you're feeling it today and you want to peek the door instead, go for it. When you play bench properly, the world is your oyster. A few other tips for holding off a post plant just in case when a teammate gets to bench before you. Staying in abs to hold behind and play off the bomb is great, as anyone trying to defuse has a distinct height disadvantage. Taking out a short or kitchen as a team will generally bag you the round. Finally, hold onto your smokes and mollies for this post plant. A smoke lobbed into a choke point at the door, window, or short will effectively cut the retake time in half for anyone approaching from that area of the map. We've already gone over how to take middle enough. This, sadly, is going to be us nearing the end of the video. Our last topic here is going to be taking and how to approach A site. For A, you're going to need to learn getting some smokes in. Taking A without at least one of the usual smokes is pretty much a death wish. These three are, of course, CT spawn, jungle, and stairs. None require any difficult lineups. However, you will need to create a jump throw bind for any CT smoke that you want to throw. A quick Google will come up with a line to copy and paste into your console to assist you with that as well. Anyway, once you've got these areas smoked off, you're going to want to go in fast. If you haven't gotten the bomb down before the smoke fades, it's going to be target practice for any CTs. They'll be able to pick you off from short, connector, jungle, CT spawn, and stairs. And that's just the people rotating. You'll also have to deal with any of the defenders on the site itself, so these smokes are vitally important to help you guys isolate the fights. Make sure to hard clear the areas like Shadow, Sandwich, Firebox, and Ninja before you get the plant. Once you get the bomb down, it's incredibly useful, no actually rather necessary, to have at least one bit of the map control other than the site. Whether this is leaving a man behind in ramp, going up the ladder to palace, getting flash into CT spawn, or being audacious and pushing into connector and jungle, it doesn't matter. What does matter is making sure that you get into one of these areas, otherwise you'll quickly get surrounded and slaughtered. Anyway, with that all being said, that's our time. Time to wrap up this video and hope that you guys get that sweet, sweet elo. If you paid attention in this video, Mirage will soon become your playground and nobody will be able to match you on it, unless they watch this video as well. If you want to get better at Mirage or any other map in CSGO, you probably need to head over to ProGuides.com where you can go ahead and get yourself a coach. Here you'll find tons and tons of guides from the pros, and not just any old pro, you'll probably learn from Simple himself. Additionally, you can hire your own personal coach to take you guys through the gameplay and assist you in getting global elite in no time. So my question is this, what are you waiting for? Boost your game today. But before you head out to ProGuides.com, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.